decimal numbers. A place value chart shows the value of each digit in a decimal number. For example, if we have the number 2,763 decimal 5,4, we can identify which digit is in which place value. So the two is in the thousands, the seven is the hundreds, the six is the tens, the three is the ones. When we look at our decimal numbers, we also think about what place value those numbers could be in. The first uh, number after the decimal place is the tenths. The second one is the hundredths. followed by the thousands, and then the ten thousands. You'll notice that in the decimal place values, they end in the THS to represent that those are um, decimal numbers rather than whole numbers. So now what we want to do is we want to write the place value of the underlying digit in each of the following numbers. So here we have our 5, and this is in the 1s, 10s, 100s, 1000s, 10,000s. In the 2, in the next uh, number, it is a decimal place, so this is the 10s, and the 2 is in the 100s. So if it's helpful for you to sort of um, step forward uh, or um, backwards, depending on which way you're going, uh, to identify what the place value is that's underlined, you are welcome to do that. In our next number, uh, we're looking at the digit 9, which is in the first uh, decimal place. So that is our tenths. Our 1 in the next number is in our thousands and you can reference the chart up above if that is helpful for you and then the last digit is the three it's our decimal place it's the third decimal place and that is our thousands with a th In addition to being able to identify the place value of a number, it helps us to identify what the, how we would say the word or vice versa. So if we're given a word, how can we express that as a digit or as a number? So the first one we want to express as a number is 457. So 457. That one's fairly straightforward. The next one is 72,000. So we know that we have 72 in the thousands position, 290. So sometimes just walking it through um, and expressing that as you read it, the expression helps as well. The next one is 1,043. So that is our whole number, 1,043. Whenever you see the word and, that's going to be your signal that we're going to have a decimal place. And then anything after that will be our number. So it's 5 tenths, so that's in the first decimal place. So that's 5 right there. The next number, we have 22,000. So that's our whole number. So 22,000 looks like this. So 22 with three zeros, and that's our decimal place, 54 hundredths. So hundredths is the second decimal place. So 54, that works just like that. And then the last one, 200, and so there's our decimal place, 31 thousands. So when we're thinking about that, we need to make sure that the 31, or the one in this case, which is our last digit, ends up in the thousands place. So in order to do that, there's our 31, 
This is in the thousands place, so we need to add an extra zero in the tenths place in order to make that work. Next, we're going to write each of the numbers in words. So think back to what we did up in that first example. So think about our place value and think about how we express that. So 2,000 600 81 and that's how we would express that number. So 2,681. You'll notice that I didn't have in word and in there because we reserve the word and for the decimal place. The next one we have 20,000. 400. 17. And to, reckon, to show that it's a decimal place, 8 tenths. This is in the tenth spot. The next one, I'm just going to change colors so we don't get it confused with this one above because I ran out of space. I have 300. 62. and 59 hundredths. That's how we would express that one. And the last one, we have zero, or we can just express it as our decimal place, which would be 24, and the last decimal place is in the hundreds position, so 24 hundredths. Sometimes we can express decimal numbers as fractions as well. So we can express these as mixed numbers. So where we have a combination of a whole number and a fraction, or we can express it as words. So think about when we're expressing our decimal number as a mixed number or a mixed fraction. We have our whole number as our number in front of the fraction. And then we have our decimal number on the top of the fraction that's called the numerator. And whatever place value it's in becomes the denominator. So we have one and three tenths. So one and three over 10. So one and three tenths. So those are the three different ways we can express this. So the next one, our five is our whole number. So sometimes we can write that larger if we want to. And then how do we express our decimal portion of this number? Well, our seven goes in the numerator, so the top of my fraction, and this is in the tenths place, so it's seven over 10. I can write this in words as five, and seven tenths. Eighteen is going to be our next one. We'll start with writing that in words. Eighteen and nine tenths. So we use that fraction to help us come up with our uh, decimal um, word. So as a decimal number, it's eighteen decimal nine, because the nine is in our tenths position. For the next one, our three is our whole number, our 24 goes in, goes in the numerator, and our denominator now will be hundreds, because our last decimal place is in the hundreds position. So that's the, all, the trick to finding out what the fraction should be. So this becomes three, and 24 hundredths. And the last one in this chart, 
we have our four as our whole number. And this is in the hundredth spot. So that's the second decimal place. So that's where our seven goes. And we have to fill in that um, space with a zero. So this becomes four and, because that des uh, signifies my decimal number, seven hundredths. And that's the introduction to decimal numbers. So we looked at first identifying place value, using that place value to represent numbers as words and digits, and then also identifying how that decimal place uh, or decimal number can be identified as a fraction. If you have any questions about today's lesson, please reach out to me. So send me an email or sign up for a virtual help session, and I will see you in the next lesson.